hearts. Help us receive your word with gladness tonight. Father, I pray, God, that we leave here encouraged and ministered to through your word. Father, we ask it all in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord tonight. Evening, church. Let's just enter into worship as we sing our opening song. Let's just praise the Lord. Also, just take this brief time to thank those that are behind me that just volunteer to come up and sing. I don't ask them to come up, but I always appreciate it when they do. Appreciate all you for being out here on a Wednesday night. Yeah. Seems like, unfortunately, across the country, Wednesday night service pastor is a rarity. We might even have a better chance of seeing a unicorn than we see a church open up on Wednesday night. I mean. Uh, and that doesn't mean that people aren't serving the Lord, but uh, I'm just happy that this church is open on Wednesday nights. Always has been ever since I've been here. I grew up, no one didn't know anything different. We had Wednesday night service. I thought that's what you were supposed to do. And not that you just, it was a thing to do. Was, of course, as you're little, you don't get into it so much. But as you get older, you want to come and you want to worship. Amen. Let's get into our second song, Shout. To the Lord. I 
sing for joy at the works of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. thankful for that promise. Give God a hand clap of praise tonight, church. Amen, amen. Amen. Aren't you glad that somebody prayed for you one day? There's people that prayed for me that I didn't have any idea that they did, but I thank God that they did. This is an old song we used to sing growing up as kids. Somebody prayed for me. They had me on their mind, and they took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad that they prayed. I'm so glad that they prayed. I am so glad that they prayed for me. Let's sing this song tonight, church, before our pastor comes for, for prayer requests. Somebody prayed for me. They had me on their mind. They took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. Somebody prayed for me. They had me on their mind. They took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. My body prayed for me. And had me on their mind. They took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed for me. My father prayed for me. He had me on his mind. He took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad he I'm so glad he prayed for me. The preacher prayed for me. He had me on his mind. He 
took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad he prayed. I'm so glad he prayed. I'm so glad he prayed for me. Come on, Pastor. Somebody prayed for me. They had me on their mind. They took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. Say that again. Somebody prayed for me. Somebody prayed for me. They took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. Somebody prayed for me. They had me on their mind. They took the time and prayed for me. thankful tonight for people that have prayed for you throughout your walk with the Lord and tonight there are people counting on us to pray for them we have many sick tonight uh, I got word today uh, Bishop Rick Helton his sister passed away from COVID so just remember his family in prayer brother Roy texted me him and Nikki were on their way to church and she started vomiting blood so Remember her in prayer. Just remember all that are sick, battling cancer, and different sicknesses. How I many knows God is greater than all manner of sickness and disease tonight? So let's just think of somebody you can think of right where you're at tonight, and let's mention them in prayer. Father, we are truly thankful for this opportunity to be able to come knowing tonight, God, that prayer still changes things. And God, we know tonight, God, there's not a sickness nor disease, God, that you cannot heal tonight. And Father, we come before your throne, God, and we're asking, God, for your intervention, God, for those, God, that need a miracle in their bodies tonight. God, we still believe, God, you're a miracle-working God, and there is nothing that you cannot do. And Father, I pray for all that are sick tonight. God, you know what they need exactly when they need it. And we know tonight, God, that you're never late, you're never early, but God, you're always right on time. And Father, I pray tonight, God, that you would speak a word and God, cancer can fall off right tonight, God. We know tonight, God, that you have power and authority even over cancer tonight. And Father, I ask God that you would touch and minister and meet every need. God, you know what they are before we even ask. But God, we ask, God, and we ask for your help tonight. God, we ask it all in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen.
Aren't you glad tonight he don't expect us to be perfect, but he expects us to be forgiven? When we do make mistakes, amen, he is there to forgive when we call out to him. Not to hold it over our heads, but the Bible says he forgives and he forgets. He casts them as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered again. So it's under the blood. Amen. It's gone tonight. Amen. If you have your Bibles tonight, I'd like you to turn to Psalms chapter 94. We're going to begin, begin at verse 16, and we'll read the rest of the chapter, and then we'll have a few more scriptures after that. But while you're turning there, i got some a couple funnies for you. It says, three pastors met and were talking over their conditions at their churches. The first pastor said, you know, since summer started, I've been having trouble with mice in my church. I've tried everything, noise, cats, spray, nothing seems to scare them away. The second said, yeah, my church too. There are hundreds of them living in the church basement. I've set traps and even called an ex expert exterminator. Nothing has worked so far. The third pastor said, I've had the same problem, so I baptized all mine, made them members of the church, and I haven't seen them since. <laughs> <laughs> Two little boys were at a wedding when one of them leaned over to the other and he asked, How many wives can a man have? His friend answered, Sixteen. Four for better, four for worse, four for richer, and four for poorer. <laughs> Here's the good ones. What kind of shorts do clouds wear? Thunderwear. <laughs> Why was the bee's hair so sticky? Because he used a honeycomb. <laughs> what noise... Does a chicken's phone make? Wing, wing, <laughs> wing, wing. <laughs> what kind of bagel can fly? A plain bagel. <laughs> Why did the dog sit in the shade? Nobody. It's because he didn't want to be a hot dog. <laughs> Where do hamburgers dance? At a meatball. <laughs> last one. The last one. I saved the best for last. Where do dogs go when their tails fall off? To the retail store. <laughs> That's a good one. 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 Psalms chapter 94, verse 16. Doesn't it feel good to laugh? Amen. Tonight I want to teach on the thought or ask the question, who will stand up for the Lord? Who will stand up for the Lord? It says, who will rise up for me against the evildoer, evildoers? Or who shall stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? I don't know about you tonight, but it seems like there's pressure upon us as Christians and as the church world to be silent. Everything that is wrong is made to be right. And if you say anything against it, we're made out to be wrong. But we must not let the pressure keep us in our seats and keep us silent. Amen? Amen? Evil is still evil, 
And even though they try to portray it as good, it's still evil. Right? But it's sad to say that people will pay money to go to the movies to watch evil. Uh oh. Yeah, you can turn on your TV and watch it. But evil is still evil, and it's not okay with God, right? We must stand up and rise up against the evil that is all around us. Amen? I'm not telling you to go out and try to fight evil because you will not win. But if we stand up in the power and the authority of Jesus Christ, amen, the Word of God says that greater is He that is in us than he that's in this world. But I'm not asking you to stand up tonight and go out and fight against evil, but I'm asking you to stand up against evil in prayer. I believe that's the greatest stand that we can take against evil is through prayer. The Word of God says prayer changes things, doesn't it? Not for me to go out and yell and scream and tell everybody that evil is wrong and they're all going to go to hell. I believe if we have the opportunity to speak against it, we should speak against it. But me going out and screaming and yelling and causing a fuss isn't going to change anything. But I believe if we stand up in prayer and stand up against evil, when we have the opportunity to stand up against it, amen, I believe things can change. Amen. Who will stand up against the workers of iniquity? The word iniquity means, I looked it up, it says gross injustice or wickedness, a wicked act or sin. Sad to say today that people are committing sinful acts right in the public. It used to be things were hidden and shameful, but now it's open and right in front of our eyes. People who do, do sinful things far outnumber us that stand up against it. But that doesn't mean we sit down and be quiet, right? Sin is still sin, right? Those that work iniquity and do sinful things are increasing and increasing. And people that should be standing against it have become silent. I believe tonight God is looking for a church and God is looking for a people that will stand up against sin and iniquity today. Sin still separates us from God. God doesn't condone and welcome sin into His body, into His church. Amen? You can call me old-fashioned or outdated or whatever, but I still believe the Word of God tonight. And sin still separates us from God. And we must stand up and continue to preach, teach, the sin separates us from God. God does love the sinner, right? God loves the sinner, but God still hates sin. We live in a society today where God's supposed to just love everything and love everybody, which He does. But God doesn't love sin. God hates sin. Who's willing to stand up for the Lord tonight? Amen? Let's go to verse 17. And if anybody gets something different out of these verses than what I got, you can feel free to add to it or say something. It says, Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. Now, how many agree with me tonight and say, being around sinful things can affect your soul? It affects you. Working around sinners and being around sinful things at work and out in the world, it affects our souls, right? Maybe tonight you're the only one in your household that stands for God and lives, lives for God. It, when you're around sin all the time, it affects our souls. But we can't let it affect our soul to the place where we just sit down and be quiet. Right? We have to continue to stand for what's right and what's true. Right? Even though the sin around us may be loud, we can't let it be so loud that it silences what we believe in our hearts and in our souls. Amen. If we sit and watch the news all day, how many knows it can make you sad, depressed, and discouraged? It can drown out the goodness of the Lord. How many knows there's sin all around us? 
But doesn't the Word of God say where sin abounds, the grace of God much more abounds? But how can they hear unless we tell them, right? But if we sit silently and say, well, I don't want to offend nobody, or it's okay, how many knows they're not going to know? Verse 18, when I said my foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. Have you ever felt like the pressure of sin and sinful things has caused you to slip or step back from God? I have. Or maybe you've allowed sinful things to get a hold and maybe you slipped and you made a mistake. But we must remember the mercy of, mercies of the Lord are fresh and new every day. And His mercy will hold us up. When we slip and we fall, amen, don't lay there and quit. Get up and allow the mercy of God to hold you up. When we feel like we can't stand on our own, how many knows He'll stand with us? And He'll hold us up. We may feel like we're slipping, or we may have slipped. Amen. The mercies of the Lord will help hold us up. God doesn't want us to get caught up in sinful things, and God doesn't want us... God doesn't want us also to sit silent and allow sinful things to prevail around us. We still have a voice. Amen? Verse 19. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy comforts delight my soul. We have trillions probably of thoughts a day that run through our minds. We have all kinds of thoughts and things that run through our minds. I don't know how many thoughts we actually have on a day. It could be a trillion, it could be a million, I don't know. But there's many thoughts that run through our minds. But nothing will bring comfort to our souls except when we learn to delight and think on good things that God has done for us. We can look at all the negative that's going on in the world and we can dwell on the sinful things that's happening all around us and we can look on the news and see all the things in the newspaper and look at all the bad that's going on or we can think about all the bad things that are happening in our lives or we can say, no, I'm not going to focus on these things. Amen. I'm going to begin to comfort and find delight in my soul on the things that God is doing good in my life. Yes, sin is abounding, but the grace of God is much more abounding. Yes, there's sin all around me, but God's still in control of my life, right? I may feel like I'm slipping, but if I slip, He's there to help me up. Yes, things are happening that we may not agree with, but God is still God and God is still good. We need to allow God's comfort to us to bring delight to our soul. When we begin to feel discouraged and depressed, begin to think about all the things the Lord has done for you. I've told you before, write things down when God answers your prayer. And then when you get discouraged and depressed, get that out and begin to read those things God has done for me. God did this on this date. God, if you did this on this day, you can do what I need you to do today. Depression and discouragement, go, because I'm trusting in the Lord. Amen. All right, verse 20. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law? You may have got a different thing out of this, but this is what I got. Shall we allow those things that are put into law, saying they are okay, change our view as if they are okay or not. Should we? No. Just because they put it into law doesn't change the fact if it goes against the Word of God. How many knows it's still sin? And we shouldn't change our view, amen, on how it is positioned in God's eyes. Just because they say it's okay or... The world says it's okay, or they put something into law to protect it and promote it. How many knows if it goes against the Word of God? As Christians, we shouldn't change our view on that situation or that whatever it is. We must continue to stand up for the Word of God. Amen? And if it goes against the Word of God, it doesn't matter how many laws are passed. If it's sin, it's still sin. You can twist it and turn it. Yes. Oh, well. Uh.
Amen. <laughs> Amen. We shouldn't be doormats. Amen. They put it in our face and it's, you know. That's right. Huh? Sure. Amen. Amen. No, you're fine. That's good. Verse 21. They gather themselves together. This is kind of like, they gather themselves. Isn't it amazing how the Word of God is relevant today? This is back in Psalms. They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous, and they condemn the innocent blood. Doesn't that sound like today? Seems like if someone stands up or someone says Merry Christmas at a store, if we say, you know, praise God out loud, oh my goodness, there comes a swarm of people to gather around and tell you how you shouldn't have said that. Yeah, yeah we're religious fanatics. <laughs> yes. Right. Right.
It says they, get, they gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous and they condemn innocent blood. If you try to live right today, you're going to have people gather against you. Amen. But we need to continue to live right even though there may be a majority against us. Amen. It's, that's right. Eventually they'll leave you alone because they know your mind is not going to be changed and you're not going to be swayed. Verse 22, I like what verse 22 says says, but the Lord is my defense, and my God is the rock of my refuge. If we will stand up for the Lord, He will be our defense. Amen? Though, against all those that may rise against us. We may feel like we're losing at times, but we must remember the Lord is our defense. Amen? Remember, He is a rock. He's a firm foundation. Amen. The Word of God says the, the gates of hell shall not prevail against Him. But if we will build this church, if we will build our lives upon the rock, the solid foundation of Jesus Christ, the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. He is also our refuge, a place to run to in the time of our trouble. Amen. So many times we try to work things out on our own power and abilities before we run to God. We should always run to God and allow Him to be our refuge to give us the wisdom and the knowledge on how to speak in, 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 in uh, return. Amen? Verse 23, it says, And He shall bring upon them their own iniquity and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Yea, the Lord, our God, shall cut them off. It may seem like right now that sin is prevailing and the wickedness and the evil of this world is prevailing, but there will come a day when they will be cut off. That may make us feel excited to know that they're going to get what they deserve, but it also should feel us sad in our hearts because to think that the devil has deceived multitudes of people and believing lies. And one day they will be cut off from the Lord and then their soul will be eternally lost. Amen. That's why it's so important for us to continue to stand for what's right and what's true. Sad to say, but things our children see and hear today are becoming normal. Yes. And they will reap what they've sown. Yes. If we sow to the flesh, we'll reap the flesh. If we sow to the Spirit, we're going to reap spiritual things. If we stand for God, He's going to say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Let's go to Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. You all know this probably. You probably don't have to turn there. God is looking for a people today who will continue to stand up for Him and serve Him. It says, If it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. God is looking for some men and some women Today, to say for me and my house, this house, this is the house right here that God's Spirit dwells in or our souls dwell in. God is looking for some men and women today so will they'll stand up and say, for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. But I believe He's also looking for some mothers and fathers that will stand up and say, for me and my house, 
we will serve the Lord as my whole household. Amen. When it's church time, it's church time. When I grew up, when it was church time, there was no excuses. Just because you didn't want to come to church, you didn't stay home from church. Right, Brother Nate? <laughs> we were in church. Yeah. And that didn't even work sometimes. Yeah, come to church and get prayed for. But God's looking for some mothers and fathers and grandparents to stand up and say, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 11, verse 29, if you want to turn there. And then we'll go to Luke 21, verse 34. Satan wants to try to yoke us up with stuff so we can't stand for the Lord. Matthew chapter 11, verse 29 and verse 30. It says, Take my yoke upon you, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest under your, under your soul. <laughs> You'll find rest under your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. How many remembers when you came to the Lord and you accepted the Lord in your life and you felt that burden and that yoke of sin and bondage lifted from your life and you felt the yoke of the Lord that was placed upon you and you felt relief? Amen. From that moment in time, Satan is doing everything he can to try to yoke us back up with stuff so we're not able to stand up for the Lord. How many knows we're not effective for God and we cannot stand up for God if we're all yoked up with sin and things that go against the Word of God? Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. You don't have to turn there if you want to write it down. It says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not again entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Amen? From the moment you got saved and you accepted the Lord and you received the yoke of the Lord, Satan is doing everything he can to try to yoke us up with stuff from our past and new, our past and he even has new stuff. He's trying to yoke us up, trying to weigh us down to the point where we're so yoked down that we can't stand up for God. Amen. But we must remember what Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 says, And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. How many knows tonight God's anointing destroys every yoke of the enemy? Amen. I believe that's why it's so important throughout the day. If you have the opportunity, listen to good anointed Christian music. Allow, you know, if you have the opportunity to listen to some good anointed teaching and preaching of the Word of God. Because how many knows the anointing of God destroys the yoke of the enemy? When Satan tries to sneak up behind you at work and tries to yoke you up with something, if you got that good music playing or the anointing of God is on your life, how many knows the anointing will destroy that yoke that Satan tries to place on your life? Amen. He's good at what he does, and I'm not here to glorify and to edify him, but I'm here to tell you tonight, amen, if he sneaks in and he tries to yoke you up with stuff, allow the anointing of God to come and destroy that yoke he tries to place on your life. Somebody knows there's no yoke that God's anointing cannot destroy. Amen. Luke chapter 21, verse 34, and then we'll go to Romans chapter 13, verse 11, and we'll end there. Sad to say this night that too many people have allowed the cares of life to keep them from standing up for the Lord. Luke 21, verse 34. Take heed to yourselves. He's saying, hey, pay attention. Watch. Lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of life, so that day come upon you unawares. Too many of God's people have allowed the cares of life to become more important than spiritual things. Sadly to say, we're too busy to take care of spiritual things because we're so busy taking care 
of the cares of life. I know we got to work, we got to take care of the family, we got to mow the yard, do all the things that life requires us to do. But let us never get too busy and wrapped up in the cares of life that we neglect spiritual things. Because if we're so worried about the cares of life, I mean, we're not going to be able to stand up for God because we're going to be too worn out and spiritually not strong enough to be able to stand up for God. Amen. Don't let the cares of life weigh you down. Yes. Yes. Yeah, or I'm reading a book instead of praying. Yes. So, that's right. Let's end at Romans chapter 13, verse 11. And that knowing the time, that now is high time to awake out of a sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. I don't know how long you've been serving God, but I've been serving God for over 30 years. My salvation is nearer today than it was 30 years ago. But we can look around and see the signs of the times, and the trumpet could sound before we say amen tonight and dismiss. Yes, the trumpet could sound before we get home, or something could happen on our way home, or life could just take us out because with every heartbeat and every breath, our salvation is nearer than it was before. We need to wake up and understand what time it is. It's not time to slack off and put the Word of God down and neglect spiritual things, but it's high time for us to wake up out of our sleep and our slumber and shake ourselves and prepare ourselves so if the trumpet sounds or if God calls us home tonight, that we're ready to stand before God and give an account for our lives. How many knows we're not going to have time to get everything right when the trumpet sounds? The Bible says He's coming in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. We're not going to have the time to say, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. We need to do that now. We need to be prepared now. And we need to make sure that we don't allow the devil to rock us to sleep with the cares of life and the things that we indulge in and the things that we deal with on a daily basis, that we don't be caught unaware when the trumpet sounds or when we have the opportunity to speak up for what's right, when evil is prevalent in front of us, do we have the power and the ability to withstand the evil that comes against us? Because if we're asleep spiritually, when evil comes against us, the evil will prevail. But if we're steady in the Word and we're standing on the rock and we're allowing God to be our defense, evil will not prevail against us. Amen? Because greater is He that is in us than he that's in the world. Amen? And we need to be careful tonight that we don't just allow the devil just to rock us to sleep. Well, these are just the signs of the times. We've heard the message. We've sung the songs. Jesus is coming soon. I think we've become... Like little kids rock to sleep. Or we become numb to the fact that I could stand before God at any moment, of any second. And we just live our lives to please ourselves and we forget we should be living our lives to please Him. Because we're all going to have to stand before Him and give an account. So let's stand for Him here so when we stand before Him there, He's going to say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter in. To the joy of the Lord. Amen. Yeah, give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. Let's stand tonight. I hope the Word of God's challenged you. Stay focused. Don't let your focus be deterred. Satan is trying to keep us busy and trying to get our focus on other things. Amen. God 
is still requiring us to keep our eyes set toward heaven like a flint. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for your word that we can stand on. We thank you, God, for being our rock, our refuge, and our defense. Lord, I thank you for your word tonight. It's still true, it's still alive, and it's still powerful. And God, we still believe your word as truth. And Father, help us as Christians today to take a firm stand on your word and your promises. Help us not to bend, help us not to bow, help us not to compromise your word. And Father, I pray tonight as we leave this place, let us leave encouraged, knowing, God, that you're with us no matter what we have to go through in life. Keep us safe and bring us back on Sunday. I pray it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. When you've done all you can, man, seems like it's never and what do you say when your orphans turn away and you're all alone, alone? Tell me what do you give when you're giving your all and seems like you can't make it through. Well, you just Stand when there's nothing left to do. You just stand, watch the Lord see you through. Yet after you've done all you can, you just.